Good evening, Facebook, YouTube, Daily Motion, and Twitter. This is Rich again, back for your third and final video blog of the night for Friday, February 20th, 2015, around 8.08 .08 in the evening in Bellarica, Massachusetts. Cold out tonight. Lows are going to go down to the low single digits, maybe zero. Tomorrow's supposed to be sunny in the morning, but clouds will roll in and tomorrow night snow but in some areas it's going to change over to rain but it might not reach the rain snow line might reach to 495 and some places could get up to six inch inches winter weather advisory posted for most of the bay state except for cape cod some news to report the debut episode of the reboot of the odd couple on cbs delivered 13.75 million people. That's amazing. And there's been rumors going around that the Boston Bruins are putting M Milan Lucci on the trading block and the Nashville Predators are interested in him. This is just rumors, just rumors in my opinion. I don't think they're going to trade Lucci at all, but you never know. And also tonight, the B Bruins will be starting Malcolm Subban in gold. That's going to be his NHL debut. Maybe he'll turn the Bruins' siege season's fortunes around. They're only one point out, up on the Florida path for, for, for the last playoff spot in the Eastern Conference of the NHL. The Bruins need wins, and they need to start getting going, or else they'll be playing golf that when the season ends. That's about it on that. My third and final video blog subject of the night is about Jim Rice. Jim Rice it is a baseball Hall of Famer. He spent all 16 seasons in the big leagues with the Boston Red Sox. He was one of the most feared hitters in the American League during the 70s and 80s. And Jim was born and he grew up in Anderson, South Carolina. He played baseball in high school and he was drafted by the Red Sox in 1971. He played four seasons in the minor leagues. He won the Triple Crown for Triple A, the, the, the like International League in 1974 with the Pawtucket Red Sox. And he also was an, in the outfield when he was playing f with the Pawtucket Red Sox was Fred Lynn as well. He made his debut with the Boston Red Sox on August 19th, 1974, and he spent 16 seasons with the Red Sox his entire career. 1975, he he and Fred Lynn were Gold Dust Twins, and they were rookies at the same time. They were dueling back and forth who was going to win Rookie of the Year, but Jim Rice's season ended when he got hit by a pitch, broke his wrist. He missed the remainder of the 1975 season. And the, and the playoffs, he didn't play in the ALCS or the World Series in 1975. He finished third in the Rookie of the Year battle in that year. And Fred, Fred Lynn was number one. He, and also Fred Lynn won most valuable player of the American League. That Fred Lynn's going to be another story for another day. And, and Jim continued to patrol the outfield for the Red Sox for the 70s and stuff. He was he was continuing to be a great hitter and stuff and feared hit in the American League. His his he won the 1978 Most Valuable Player, batting 315, 46 home runs, 139 RBIs, 213 hits, 15 triples. Four, 406 total bases. He was the first American League player to have 400 or more total bases since 1937 when um, New York Yankees great Joe DiMaggio and he had a 600 slugging percentage. Jim Rice continued to be a great hitter into the 1980s and stuff and he finished up in the top five of MVP balloting so many years. And he had his last great year in 1986, Jim Rice did. But after 1986, Jim Rice's career went through a tailspin. He was like 
basically he didn't hit for power his average was dipping he didn't drive in a lot of RBIs his his like hitting was going down he he said that in an interview years later that he was having eye problems and stuff and Jim Rice like last year in the major leagues 1989 he only hit three home runs and he actually played his last Red Sox game in September of 1989 and the Red Sox were not going to renew his contract and he tried to find another job in baseball but no team wanted him so he, he was he retired and Jim Rice eight times he was an all-star two times he won silver slugger award three times he was the American League home run leader 11 times he hit um, 20 or more home runs Eight times he drove in a hundred RBIs. Nine, four times he hit two hundred hit seasons. Seven times he hit three hundred. He holds the record for grounding into the most double plays in one season, nineteen eighty four, with thirty six. He had a ninth a fielding percentage, um, one hundred and thirty seven outfield assist. He played five hundred and thirty games at designated hitter. During his career, his career stats, 298, 382 home runs, 1,451 RBIs, and 2,452 hits. And, and Jim Rice was on the Hall of Fame ballot beginning in 1995, but he only got 29% of the vote. And it, and it took him 15 years to finally get into the Baseball Hall of Fame. He was hovering for many years around 20, 30, 40 percent of the vote but once he climbed the 50 percent he went on a ramp hit, he got up and up and up he's finally on the ballot 1980 i mean 9, 2009 he got 76.7 seven percent of the vote which was more than enough and that that was great because many people who had similar numbers f with jim rice were already in the Hall of Fame, like Ralph Kaina and a few others. And Jim Rice works for the Red Sox as an instructor and hitting coach for a few years. He works part-time on Nesson as a Red Sox studio analyst. And his number 14 was retired by the Red Sox in 2009. And Jim Rice is probably one of the probably one of the top 10 best Red Sox players of all time he's currently fourth on the all-time Red Sox home run list with 382 the only three ahead of ahead of Jim Rice is Ted Williams Kai Yastrzemski and and David Ortiz and those are the great Red Sox legends and Jim Rice is, was a great Red Sox legend and still part of the Red Sox organization to this day. Well, that's about it on that. I'll be back tomorrow, Facebook friends, YouTube followers, Daily Motion, Twitter. Three more video blogs coming. First one will be about the top 10 greatest submission wrestling holds of all time. And the second video blog will be about the MBTA's blue line. And the third and final video blog of the night is about about the Oakland A's and Tampa Bay Rays. Both of them need new ballparks in order to survive in their markets. And they need them so bad because if they don't get them, they're not going to be playing in those areas anymore. They'll be moving, and I'll tell you where they'll probably be moving to if they don't get the new ballparks. And don't forget, coming soon to these video blogs will be about the top 10 greatest Seattle Mariners players and pitchers of all time. That's the last of the series of the 30 Major League Baseball teams, top 10 of all time. And then coming Wednesday will be the top 10 Ric Flair's greatest matches of all time, the Nature Boy, 16-time world, world champion. Woo! And Ric Flair's 1991, 1993 WWE run. And the top 10 list will be taking a hiatus during March because it's March Madness. And March Madness will mean a lot of things. WrestleMania reviews and, and the NCAA March Madness tournament 
and uh, 2015 Major League Baseball previews and predictions. And maybe, just maybe, Julie Broughton and Heidi Pratt will be on these video blogs. Good night, Facebook, YouTube, Daily Motion, and Twitter. See you tomorrow morning with three more video blogs. Bye now.